All right, so hi everybody. My name is Grant Haynes, and, I, and today we're going to be taking a look at um, passing the baton student-led conferences. So uh, we're going to just kind of explore what student-led conferences are and then how our school um, implemented them and implemented them in a digital format. Um, so go ahead and get rolling with it. So just to introduce myself, my name is Grant Haynes. I'm an instructional technology facilitator in Cleveland County Schools at the Early College. Um, been in education for about 13 years and been in technology as a facilitator um, since 2013, so uh, nine years going on 10. Um, been involved in a lot of different things and uh, look forward to kind of showing, sharing what we've been uh, doing over the past year with these student-led conferences. So one thing I want to do, um, since this is also a recorded session and will also be presented live, is I want to have um, people the opportunity to kind of get to know each other. So I did provide a link to an attendance slide. And so on this slide, you can uh, grab it, introduce yourself, um, grab any of these introduction ones once they load up. Computer might be running a little bit slow since I'm also recording this, um, but you can kind of just give yourself a little bit of a presentation of who you are, interests that you may like or have. And so you can use mine as an example, just drop an image on there. So nothing major that you have to do, but just a way of kind of introducing yourself um, just in case um, someone stumbles on here and they want to kind of see who else has been in attendance. And also just want to point out any links on here um, you can access from the first slide, you can actually use this link down here um, to access the presentation, or you can scan this QR code if you're using an iPad or smart device, iPhone, anything like that. Um, and also any links that I put on here are uh, will be in blue, sometimes will be in white, depending on the background. And you can also scan any QR code should be also there with any link that's on here. So just uh, FYI there. So we're going to take a look at a, a video from a couple years back that explains um, student-led conferences. And so while we're looking at this, I want to point out also we have a Padlet. Um, on this Padlet, I would like for you to share any notices and wonders. So by notice and wonders, so things that you see are happening in the video and then things that you may have questions about. And it's taking a second to load, but over here we have our notices. And then over here, we'll have our wonder. So any questions that you may have after watching the video, you can place them here. And then any notices while we're watching the video, you can do that. And if as other um, notices and wonders come into this particular area, if you see one um, that you agree with or one kind of em emphasize, give them a thumbs up. Um, so that way they know that's it's a good question. Also, it's things for me so I can go back and take a look at these for um, possible future responses. Uh, depending on what it is, but I'm going to go ahead and play the video. Um, you can um, also watch this on your own if you want to watch it without having to watch the recording. Um, but if you want to watch it via the recording, I'll have that on here as well. So let me pull that back up. And then we'll go ahead and hit start. Hi, Mom. Welcome to my student line conference. First, I'm going to tell you about my goals. The conferences here are different. Most schools, they the teachers talk to the parents, but in our school here, Wildwood, the students talk to the parents. We actually get to tell our parents what we're doing. I think the greatest impact that I see is them taking ownership of their growth process. Pretty much it just changes everything about parent-teacher conferences. They get to see all your work and everything that you're doing and actually get to learn a few things about what you're doing. So. The beginning of the universe, creation of stars, uh, creation of the earth. Um, we map that out on the football field uh, as a timeline. I think student ownership of learning and what that means is students being able to say, this is who I am as a learner, this is what I'm learning, this is why it's important to me. 
You're building that sense of relevance and connection to the curriculum, sense of relevance and connection to each other, to the teacher, and to the broader work of the community. To actually make student ownership a reality in the school is very challenging. So what we did is we just started very small and we just said just figure out how students are going to have a little more presence at the conference. And I think just creating that sense that the student is the center of the conference so the student gets to be the one that facilitates that conference. Here's the table of contents for my binder. So first there's an introductory letter to introduce you to the student conference and what I'd be talking about. It's not about us. Um, it's the kids' turn mm -hmm. to conference. It's their turn to shine. We provide enough resources for them so that when they lead the conference, they feel confident. Well, this year we wrote an essay to know what we're going to say to our parents and not just keep pausing. Now I will tell you my strengths and then my weaknesses. My strengths are math. So, for example, this is, this is exponents. And this is long division. During the quarter, you really have to like work on each uh, assignment so because you know you're going to like want to tell your parents something about it. There's a lot of pre-work that's done before uh, conferences happen. The kids have got to practice. And you also have to really let them think about what they want to be in their binder. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of, of things that they chose and things that we chose. So when I was preparing my binder, you know, the whole time I was thinking, oh, I can tell my mom, like, all the new things I learned. Probably my favorite thing is this. We, like, found three themes for each document and just connected them. The purpose of the student-led conference is to show her where I was at, where I am at, and where I want to be at. So for quarter two, I want to get better at, like, literary devices and analytical paragraphs and start to do better on the vocabulary test that we have. So, like, you could help me study for those. I really got to show my mom, like, the work that I was proud of, and I also included some work that I kind of struggled with. And then here's a vocabulary test. I was pretty confused on this one. While I'm doing the work and towards the end of the quarter, I'm, like, kind of looking at, like, how I'm doing because I know that I'll have to talk about it. Not just the teacher, but I will. It gets people used to being able to like review their work like a reflection. Reflection is part of our school culture. You know, as teachers, we're yes. expected to reflect. I need to work on these um, traits. So the first taker would be like raising my hand okay. more. Mm -hmm. okay. Or like going into activities where I wouldn't feel like comfortable, like my comfort zone. Oh. Like working in groups, kind of. Okay, um, that's a good reflection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What Jonathan was able to showcase makes me so proud of him. He also has a good grasp of what he's learning. And that depth is what I really was able to get today that I couldn't have got, got from him at home. Good job. So, yeah, thank you. It helps the parents to see their kids in a different light, mm -hmm. too. This is what my child is as a but student. You can see like, the little details of how I draw. Through student-led conferences and through the reflection and emphasis on applying what you know and articulating what you know and sharing what you know, it's been really cool to see the expression of what someone's learned about themselves. Loving events and people in my life have helped me become who I am. No matter how many things change in the future, I'll still be me. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. All right, so hopefully this um, video kind of gave you a really good introduction of student-led conferences um, in a traditional format. Um, as you can saw, as you saw in the video, um, students shared out their information um, or the, excuse me, artifacts um, from uh, notebooks that had all their work and they had reflective um, questions and things on there, um, asking how, where have they started, where are they going, and where they currently are. And so that's kind of the whole point of these student-led conferences is to empower students to advocate for themselves. In fact, I'll also next we'll put up the definition here. Hi, Mom. Um, this is from EL Education. EL stands for Expeditionary Learning. Um, 
Uh, it's a great resource if you want to check it out. Um, but this is their official definition. A student-led conference is a meeting with a student and his or her family and teachers during which the student shares his or her uh, portfolio of work and discusses progress with family members. The student facilitates the meeting with from start to finish. Student-led conferences can be implemented at all grade levels, kindergarten through 12th. Preparation for a conference creates an authentic purpose for good organizational and communication skills. The structure builds students' sense of responsibility and accountability for their own learning, and it helps to hone their understandings of what it means to meet learning targets. Um, so this spells it out greatly for you. So um, we're working on student self-advocacy and then also giving them kind of a purpose for just showing uh, when they show up for their student-led conferences. So instead of just being there listening to the teacher and the parent talk about what they're doing, they themselves are actually explaining what they're doing in the class, um, how they're doing on their assignments, why they're doing what they're doing, and ways they can either continue their success or ways they can be more successful. And so we'll kind of discuss how our school has uh, done this over the years. So we'll kind of start off with our story. <clears throat> So our SLC story. So starting off, like I said earlier, where I'm at Cleveland Early College High School, we're in Shelby, North Carolina, and we're on the campus of Cleveland Community College. So we're actually a very small school. We only have 230 students approximately with about 16 um, staff members, eight, eight of which are our teachers, um, our actual classroom teachers, and then various support staff. Um, we've been around since 2008, but when we were founded, we were actually founded on the expeditionary learning model. Um, this is something uh, that's been around. It's based off of Outward Bound and Kurt Hahn. Um, you can look it all up if you go to eleducation.org. Um, but that's kind of where we um, base a lot of our things. So we end things in circles, um, do a lot of, of sharing out pro uh, group-based projects, hands-on learning, uh, going to places, um, just a lot of really cool opportunities that you may not see in a larger school. Not that that's um, bad or anything, but that's just the opportunities we have here. However, the SLC part is something that we've had in place since 2008. Um, the way we do these, we schedule them once um, every quarter, usually at the midway point. Um, so we're on a nine-week schedule, and usually after the first nine weeks, uh, right around in the uh, early November or early April phase, depending on the semester, is when we have the student-led conference. And so the way this works, uh, whether it's digital or um, non-digital, the students create some type of portfolio. Uh, traditionally, it was been in a three-ring binder, um, and all courses are represented. So this, in our case, it's all of their high school and their college. And so that covers um, quite a wide uh, range of courses that they can explain about. Um, for their high school classes, since this is more where it's based from, it's a little bit more in depth. So student or the excuse me, the teachers will actually um, pick out particular assignments that the students need to require in the portfolio portfolio and then have some type of reflection piece in there about the assignment. If the student does not have the assignment there, maybe they didn't do it or something happened to it and they don't have it, they actually have a form that they fill out. Um, explaining why it's not in there, and then they add that as part of that. So even if it's not there, they still have to explain why that is uh, the case. For their college, um, that one is primarily they will print off a transcript of their grades and then also kind of a breakdown of their assignments for those classes as well and have to explain um, what may or may not be there um, for that as well. So we will um, also have an SLC night. So the actual night that the parents come, this would be kind of like your parent-teacher conference night. Um, parents actually will sign up for a spot, usually about a 15 to 20-minute slot. Um, we um, open up the entire school. We usually have about 10 uh, rooms that we use for the, um, the meetings, usually about two to three uh, families in there. And then the way it works, the teacher actually acts as a facilitator. So we try to keep the students in at least the same grade level uh, room. So there's usually about two or three classrooms per grade level that they have um, that they can go into. Um, but the teacher's not there to really talk to the parent until the very end if they have any further questions. Because again, this is the spotlight is on the student for them to advocate for themselves. Um, so while they're in there, they're going over everything inside of it, um, explaining their work, what they plan to do to become more successful, 
And then if they have any questions for the teacher, they do go on from there. Once they finish that, we actually have them fill out, in our case, a Google form um, to ask some, um, some questions. It's kind of ref quick reflection questions about how they thought the conference went, ways they think their child could improve or ways they've been successful. And then we take that information and can use that and share that with staff. And so that way you, they can kind of get a pulse on about what's happening uh, with their students. So, like I said, we've been open since 2008. I've been at this school since 2016. Um, when I came here, I was the first time I was introduced to this entire concept. I hadn't actually heard of student-led conferences until I came um, to this school. And so, uh, when I came here, I came on this role because in 2015, um, this school was the first school to become one-to-one. -one. It was kind of the uh, tester school for the other one-to-one -one that eventually rolled out uh, later in 2016. And so right away, I saw a potential for going digital because, as I said before, it was a three ring uh, binder that had all their work um, and it had it for the year. Once it was done, the binders were emptied out and then they were reused for that grade level the next year. And so some missed opportunities there because all this work that they've um, talked about and explained to their parent is now gone. And so looking through it, I was thinking there's got to be a way of going digital because if we have a portfolio in place, then we can um, set it up for them to be able to uh, present on it and then also reflect on it later because they're not having to throw it away. It's always with them because it's on like a website, um, Google Docs, slideshow, something. So started to look around for ideas and ways that we could implement it. So the 2020 pandemic actually offered up an opportunity for us to kind of take a look at potentially going digital. Um, we ended up not doing the SLCs just because um, they thought on top of all the other things going on, having to also uh, present and then also uh, accountability of if they actually did the pre presentations. So we had a, actually a year off. So when we did our SLCs in the fall of this past year in 2021, they had not been done since the fall of 2019 because we missed the spring one because of the pandemic. Um, so um, after a little bit of research, found this article uh, from Shake Up Learning. And it was how to create powerful student e-portfolios with Google Sites. Um, and this really kind of gave me a, a springboard into how to actually utilize this. Um, Mike Muhammad is the guy need to give him all the credit for a lot of the successes that we had because the way he implemented these with his particular students, he did this on a class uh, level versus a school level. Um, it really kind of ignited like, all right, I think we can do this because we're small enough and then we have the technology to be able to do this. So I think we can do this. And so definitely check out that article, click on that link to take a look at it. So now we go into the implementation phase. So how do we transition from a three ring binder of printed off work and then um, turn it into some type of professional looking uh, website, in this case, a Google site. So um, the new Google sites, if you've not played around with it yet, and we'll take a look a little bit um, here in a second at this kind of ways you can use it. Um, it actually, it's very easy to make um, this kind of small stuff look very professional. You can change out themes, um, use pre-made um, formats and everything, or pre-made sections, so you can display work and have reflection pieces on there. And so that's what we went with. So my job, since this was kind of my brainchild, was to kind of figure out a way that we can implement this so students can, one, create a website, and then two, figure out the best way to put this in so that we don't lose what we had with the binders, but also what, things can we add that we can gain to make this a more um, impactful um, experience for the students and give them a sense of ownership versus just their work. Um, so the nice thing about um, in the one-to-one -one space, uh, we're a Google-based school. Um, so we have access to Google Drive. Um, and since Google Sites works with Google Drive, it was very easy to take any work that was in there and put it directly into the site pretty quickly. Um, any work that was like paper, uh, we would we could scan that in, obviously, if we needed to. And then any major large scale projects, um, they could take pictures of it um, using a smartphone. And we and every single bit of 
like how to we could think of. Um, we'd recorded a video on how to do it, some screen recordings, and then use that um, when we were doing the explanations. Now, to give them the sense of ownership, we actually encouraged them to try and personalize their websites um, within reason, obviously. Um, so inside of Google Sites, there are really great ways of uh, kind of personalizing, adding in photos, um, fonts, and themes to kind of give them a little bit of ownership over what they're doing. And then also, we actually intentionally had an About Me section. So they actually went in and have an entire About Me page, and we gave them some topics to go off of. So what are your hopes and dreams? What's your favorite media? This can be um, video games. Uh, TV shows, they're watching books, this anything that they're into watching or listening to, what are their hobbies, and then what I create is kind of an open question. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing that they create. Um, they could be um, something where they create art or poetry, music, um, anything that um, uses their creativity. Um, we wanted to try and you know give them a chance to show a spotlight on that. So that way, when they look at this website, this is me, this is who I am. All right. And so the way we kind of got this across to them was we utilize Canvas. So as part of our one to one program, um, we use uh, Canvas LMS. Um, it's a great resource. It's kind of got all the bells and whistles. If you're a Google Classroom school, a lot of what we do here, you can do the exact same way because the majority of what was done in here was done using sharing videos and then embedding particular assignments. And so the way we did this, uh, we actually have a kind of a seminar class period. Um, it's a class period that all 9th, 10th, and 11th grade have. So just full disclosure, 12th grade did not participate in the SLCs. They actually have a different kind of final um, end of school project that they work on. Um, so they didn't do this part. But the 9th through 12th, or excuse me, 11th grade students have a seminar period um, where they actually had time to work on this. And so kind of think about that as you're thinking, oh, how can I implement this in my school? Um, and so what we did was we kind of broke it down by week. And so we kind of did a starting your portfolio a week, a making it yours week, a gathering artifacts week, and then like a final checks week. So we took about a month um, before we really, or excuse me, we took about a month before we had to do SLC night. Um, to get the students ready because we feel like trying to do everything the week before just way too much especially creating the website so we really spaced it out and i would highly encourage if you're especially going the digital route um, to um, give yourself plenty plenty of time like creating websites at the beginning of the school year would be my recommendation especially if you have incoming students and if you're going with elementary school um, that's an even like yeah as much time as you can um, so back on track so using canvas we kind of broke everything down into sections. So you can kind of see on my um, image here, we kind of create, have a part where it's create your website, design your website, and we utilize um, resources such as Edpuzzle because a lot of these were recorded videos uh, that were made for the students to watch and to kind of keep them, make sure they're watching everything. We utilize Edpuzzle um, as a, it's a service that's semi-free um, that where you can embed questions. And so we would put questions at the end, to force them to watch the entire video. And then once they answer the question, we knew they'd watched it. And then using Canvas, you can actually have it set to where they have to submit answers or submit the assignment before they can move on to the next part. So this kind of kept everything in check. And then we also would only publish things for that week. So if we had some, um, some fast moving kids, they didn't get way out ahead of everybody else. And so we went from, excuse me, step by step over the couple weeks until it's time for SLC night. And then we were ready to go. So let's take a look real quick at um, Google Sites. So I can show you what you're able to do relatively fast. So I'm going to switch over to this tab. So inside of a new Google site, um, it's very simple. You can put your title here.
And then say, for example, I wanted to put an artifact or some work here. What we encourage them to use were these uh, content blocks is what they're called. So if you just click on them, it drops them in here, gives me a plus icon. I can click upload so I can upload from my computer. In our case, we would always use from Drive because majority of the work was inside of the um, student Google Drives. And then we would just um, have them go in, find their work. So I'll just use this table 10 exercise, insert it in, and it would automatically drop it in there for them. The one thing we always had to kind of remind them was to make sure that they shared um, access so that way these wouldn't appear blank. But then they can go in and give it a title and then give it a reflection. And it was super easy to do that. We would break down the website. We'd have an about me page, the way you add pages over here on in the middle section. Click here. About me. And then also add in our subject. So we could go English. We could go math. You can kind of see, like, we just broke it down by section and had them add content. And the way we did that was we had um, our teachers. Um, they were given a document that they filled out the list of the artifacts that they were required to have. The kids, that document was made ac accessible inside of Canvas. And then the students could go and collect that work. And they had a week or so in order to get everything. And this was all work that should have been done, like, a week or two, up to a month Ago, so it should have been easily accessible um, for them to put it into their document. So, or excuse me, into their website. And so from there, it was just building from there. And then once they were done, we made sure we they published them. And then one thing that I encouraged them to do was to share the website as far as the editing uh, with me, and then also with their uh, their core teachers. So that way, the teachers and me also always had access to the website in case they had a question or if there was something that was missing, we could go and say, hey. You got one part right here that you need to put in. Uh, make sure you add that in. And they were always submitting links um, to the website inside of the uh, Canvas course. So one thing I want to point out there. So like you can see here, SLC portfolio link submission. So once they created the website, they submitted the link. And then sometimes they submit a link to, in this case, a learner profile, which was a really great document um, that kind of broke down who they are as a person. And so that's how we did it. That's how we utilize uh, Google Sites in order to um, create the digital version of the portfolio. Just built it up um, and then had that About Me section in there. And then we utilize a couple other things. One thing we used was Flipgrid uh, to create introduction videos, put those on the home page, and you'll see examples of those um, in a little bit. Um, but they could go in and easily copy the link from their Flipgrid video, drop it into um, Google Sites, and they were ready to roll. So let's take a, a quick look at the opportunities that this uh, digital version of SLC is presented for us. So one thing it did was, like I said earlier, it gave them the opportunity now they have a portfolio that's going to be with them from freshman year all the way to senior year. Now, obviously, the students who started this year as sophomores and juniors won't necessarily get that experience, but in three years from now, um, our freshmen that started this process will actually be able to look back all the way to their freshman year as seniors and be able to reflect on that. So imagine being an English teacher, um, seminar teacher somewhere where you can like involves kids kind of do inner um, kind of like an introspective on themselves. What a great resource they have now because I can see who I was. I can look at the about me page. And these are things that we're still in the process of thinking about. Like, do I update the about me page or do I keep it the same and make an about me sophomore year and about me junior year? there's really no right or wrong answer for that because it's up to you and uh, the kind of the staff to figure out what is it that we want them to put into this and the ways they can make it um, as kind of personal as we can uh, while also showcasing the work. So we had that opportunity. And then also the other thing, um, all the set, all the websites, um, since they were shared with me and their teachers, uh, we've kind of put that on a uh, internal page um, inside of a, uh, a, uh, a staff level Canvas course that has all the students links to their websites. And so now a rising sophomore, there's rising sophomore teachers, they can go in and actually take a look at their incoming students. Now, being as small as we are, we already kind of 
have an idea of who all the students are. And we don't necessarily teach everyone, but uh, we definitely kind of know um, each student individually, especially by their sophomore and junior year. But either way, in a larger school, you may not see certain students, but now you have an entire um, page of portfolio links to see exactly who the students are and know uh, kind of what you're getting into with them and how you can work with them, especially using utilizing a uh, thing such as a learner profile. And so the results of all this, because the SLCs were always a fairly successful night, but this was kind of a big gamble. We're going digital. Uh, one big question was asked was like, well, what's the whole point of having them come in and presenting when they could easily present at home um, on their uh, on their laptop? And it's just kind of making sure there's always that sense of accountability from us. So like that's where the facilitating comes in. They're going to come in. They're going to present to them, showcase their website, everything they've um, done. And so they can uh, be advocates for themselves. And so our first SLC night with the digital portfolios was back in November of this past fall semester of 2021. And then we actually had a second one in uh, April of 2022. And both of those were actually, oh, we had overwhelmingly positive feedback. Like I cannot actually not think of any negative feedback that we got from as far as parents and staff. Um, some staff going into it who have been here since 2008 were a little hesitant about switching over from this kind of tried and true process. But once they kind of solved the opportunities they, of reflection and deep diving into who these um, students are, they really kind of got on board and saw the potential for it. And that, we're just kind of amazed at how professional a lot of these websites looked. Now, were all of them great professional websites? No, they are like any other school. There are students who did exceptionally well, and there are students who did the bare minimum, maybe less. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things we ran into um, and just kind of that accountability piece of using Canvas to kind of, they had to submit certain things in order to get onto the next part. And then having that teacher in there to kind of check in behind them, like, hey, you're missing this part, make sure you get these in. And then also they have to present this. So if they have a half finished uh, portfolio, that reflects on who they are and then hopefully will translate across to the parent. So what I have here are four examples of the uh, portfolios. They're um, a mixture of ninth, 10th and 11th grade students. Um, we'll just hop into one for example. So some things, and, the, and some of these are ones that may you may see these need to access. So these some of these might be ones that have um, things that the student forgot to share properly. Um, but you can kind of see examples of their work, the About Me pages. And I just realized I'm not sharing my tab, so I apologize for that. Um, so here's the Hopes and Dreams are on the About Me page. And so one thing I want to point out, we actually had a page for just this particular grade, and then they made sub pages for each of their subjects. And so you can hop on there. You can kind of see just examples of what they did and how they did certain things. So, for example, like there's a good example of some paperwork. They just took a picture of it and then dropped that photo into um, their website. And so from here, you can kind of glean who this um, student is. Um, one other thing we did, we had an end of year reflection put on there. So they, in this case, she linked it for them. And again, it's one that may not be successfully accessible, but you kind of get the idea of it. Um, and this is one of the things where you just check in behind them and see how they're doing. But there's plenty of other examples for you to check out. And I highly encourage you to do so. So look through these and just kind of, you know, think about in your mind, what could I do in my, like, is this something that I would implement school-wide? Is this something that I would just implement in my class? Because, for example, uh, when I was originally looking at this, this was something that a just a teacher was doing in their classroom um, for their physics class. It was not something they were doing on a school level. We were already doing something similar on school level, so this is the way we implemented it. Um, but you may, you could use this as a, um, uh, like an end of semester project, like you're building a portfolio because, and now you have something you can take with you. And that's actually another opportunity I didn't, I forgot to mention. Um, when they graduate, they can actually take ownership of this website 
And now you have this really great artifact website of things you could send to college. Like, hey, here's all my work from ninth through uh, 12th grade that I've showcased, you know, check this out. And so it could be a really powerful tool for them uh, when it comes getting closer to applying for colleges. And so with that, I would like for you to reflect um, what would student led conferences look like in my school? You can even change that from school to classroom um, or even district, depending on your level of, um, that you are. So definitely check it out. Um, this one is um, just a straightforward Padlet. Hopefully this will be filled with responses as we go through because this, like I said, this is pre-recorded um, before we've done any of the sessions. So if you're stumbling upon this a little bit later, um, then you may see some of some responses here. Definitely look through those. You may get some ideas um, that you did not consider before. So um, definitely, definitely check those out. Take some time to go through that. Um, and then lastly, as far as resources, um, I don't want you, you know, to just talk about all these wonderful things that we did and all this hard work and not leave you nothing. So there's two things I'm going to leave on here. Um, one is an SLC prep document. Um, so this is kind of will be a document that has um, links to the videos of the how to's um, use those how you want to just kind of keep in mind these a lot of these videos were recorded specifically for our students, but it should still have some good information. So if you want to recreate them, you can um, and use them that way. Um, and then there's also going to be kind of like a breakdown of what was in each uh, part of the uh, Canvas courses, because some of you may not have a Canvas um, course or Canvas LMS in your school. So I don't want to leave you out. So that's first link is for you. The second link, the Canvas Commons link. Um, so if you do use Canvas and would like to um, take a look at that particular module, you can uh, click on that link and they'll take you to the Commons link. And then you can import that into a course and take a look at it. Um, so like I was saying earlier, some of the videos were used using Edpuzzle. And so they may not um, uh, play exactly. So that's why there's also a link in the description for that uh, for the videos. So if you want to go back and use the videos, the video should reflect the name of the assignment. So you can always go in and change that if you need to. Um, but definitely check it out. Um, I hope this helps you out. And I've really enjoyed um, explaining this. And I hope that student-led conferences are, will pop up in other schools around North Carolina and beyond. So with that, I uh, thank you very much. If you ever need to get in contact with me, um, always feel free to shoot me an email or you can uh, direct message me on Twitter. Um, always look forward to answering questions from everyone. But with that being said, um, thank you very much for your time and I hope you all have a great day.